In Creole Parametric, the Clearance and Creepage extension allows you to find the shortest distance between two conductors either along the surfaces of an insulator or through the air. Let's take a look at how to set up the analysis. In another video, I will show you how to run the analysis, evaluate the results, and improve your model. Here I have an assembly open. This is a standard PTC demo data set. Just want to mention that. To get into CCX, the clearance and creepage extension, you'll go to the analysis tab. And here we have the icon for clearance and creepage analysis. Be aware that you're going to need the license for this module. Also, another thing to be aware of, before you click on the icon, any components in the assembly that are not visible that are hidden will not be included in the analysis. Be aware that is hidden in addition to being suppressed. Hey everyone, I just wanted to interrupt the video for a moment because after recording, I realized that I did not provide a good enough explanation of the difference between creepage and clearance before getting into the different setup steps. So creepage is the shortest distance between two conductors along the surface of an insulator. So for example, we have the conductors over here and the conductors over here. The shortest distance would be measured along this particular surface, which is an insulator. Whereas the clearance is the shortest distance between the two conductors measured in the air. And in this particular situation, the conductors would have the shortest distance between here through the air. And also another advantage of using CCX for the analysis is that you can set up your different values for the groove width in order to figure out whether there is a potential for a short circuit through the air. And this is a tool that I wish that I had when I was working on UAVs and we had a lot of high and low power wires that were running near each other. So let's get into it. I will click on the clearance and creepage analysis icon. Here we have a dialog box that opens up just to make more space on the screen. I am going to turn off the display of the navigator, which takes away the model tree. And here you can see the clearance and creepage analysis dialog box. First, if you go to the menu drop down menu, here we have an options command, and this is where you can set up some different defaults. For example, in a moment, I'll talk about the CTI parameter, and this is something that's necessary in order to perform the different calculations. You're going to need this parameter called CTI, and you can get it from either a part model, or you can define it here in the assembly. If the CTI parameter is defined in the different part models, you can specify which one it should look at. In this particular situation, it's going to use a parameter in models called comparative underscore tracking underscore index as the parameter to use. We also have a default value, also a default violation tolerance. I'll talk about that in the next video. You can also specify the units that you want to use and the default decimal places. Also, you can specify if you want a violation reported, if the path that's calculated for clearance or creepage is less than or equal to the violation distance or just less than the violation distance. And we've got some other different options here for the performance, like number of cores on your computer to use and also the sampling distance for clearance and creepage. I'm just going to cancel out of here. I didn't actually change anything. Now let's take a look at setting up the metadata. And in this video, we will take a look at the metadata tab and also the electric nets tab. In the next video, we will go through analysis and results. So here we are on the metadata tab. So each one of your components is going to need a parameter for CTI, which is that comparative tracking index and if CTI is a value of zero, that means that the component is a conductor. It can allow electricity to flow through it. If the CTI is greater than zero, then you have an insulator 
and the higher the value, the greater the degree of insulation that it has. So for example, you can see that we have a few different components with a value of 300, which means they are excellent insulators. However, if I scroll down, we have a few other components with a value of five, which means that they are not as good insulators, but some of these are in blue, and I'll go into those in a moment. That means that it is a hybrid component. In other words, it's got material in it that is conductive and material that is insulated. Let's go back up in the list over here. You'll also see that some of these different components have a CTI of negative one. That means that the CTI value has not been defined for these different components. I'm going to check this box here to show parts with undefined CTI values only. You'll notice that the graphics area ended up just showing those different components, plus the list also reduced down. So there are four different components that do not have a CTI value. All these components are made out of metal. They are actually conductors. So I'm going to change the CTI value for these different parts to zero. And as I punch in the number, since I have this box checked, it is removing it from the list, plus also turning off its display in the graphics area. And for the last one, this spring, yep, it's made out of metal. Let's hit zero again. So now everything has a defined value. I'm going to uncheck the box. And so we see the list here again. Let me show you how some of these different values come over from the part models. I'm going to close out of the analysis. And I have some of these parts open in another window. Let's go to this particular part. If I now go to my parameters dialog box, which you can get to from the model intent overflow menu, if I scroll down in the list here, there we have it. There is a parameter defined in the part model for the comparative tracking index. It's got the same name that is defined in the options dialog box, and here is the value of 300. Let's cancel out of there. I'm going to go to one of those other parts that was showing up in the list in blue. And now if I go to my parameters dialog box, we can see that for the part itself, it has a comparative tracking index of five, but let me rearrange my screen so I can show both the component and the dialog box and the model tree. If I change the look in dropdown list from part to feature and then select what's supposed to be the metal conductor, we can see that the conductor feature itself has a CTI defined as well, and its value is zero. So this is a hybrid part. It's got CTI values for individual features as well as for the part itself. And so that's why it's showing up blue in the list. Let's cancel out of here. Let's go back to the assembly window. And once again, get into the creepage and clearance analysis dialog box. So here you can see the different components in blue that have CTI values for both the part itself and individual features. All right, so now that we have the CTI defined, I also wanna show you that you have a drop down list where you can say, hey, I just wanna see the components that are conductive, and now they are highlighted in green, and which ones are isolating. In other words, have a value uh, greater than zero, and undefined, well, we defined everything, so nothing is available from changing this dropdown list. Let's go back to the value of none. Also, I had mentioned that you can override the individual values. So for example, this one comes from the part. If I plug in a different value for the CTI here in the assembly, you've got a couple of icons that can say, hey, let's write this CTI value that we overrode to the part model, or we could restore the CTI value from the part model into our analysis dialog box here. All right, that's good for that. I will go into cemented components at the end of this video. 
Also, you could specify any components that you want to exclude from the analysis. But we've set up everything for our metadata, which again mainly involves defining that comparative tracking index. So now I can choose to apply the metadata. By the way, if I go to the electric nets tab, you'll notice that everything is grayed out until I apply the metadata. And when you apply the metadata, this actually creates the mesh that's necessary in order to perform the analysis. So let's go to apply the metadata. And in this particular situation, it found these different nets in the model. And a net is any group of conductive components. And right now, they are all listed under potential free. In other words, there's no electrical potential or voltage being applied to any of these different nets. So for example, if I click on net one, we can see, okay, these are these set of electrically related components that can conduct. Let's go to net two. All right, it's that one over there. Here we have net three, it's these different components. Then we have net four, which is looks like a fastener combination. Net five is a collection of a couple of other different components, looks like a washer and a fastener over on the other side. And then this one individual component for the spring. So let's say which one of these are going to have current going through this. So for having current going through it, net one, yep, I definitely want this to have potential. So let's right click and choose set potential. Let's go to net two. This one is also going to have voltage going through it. And then net three, this one's going to be connected to our ground. So I will right click and choose set grounded. And by the way, you can see also from in here, you have the ability to rename those different components or show the content. But for these other ones, net four, net five and spring, they're not going to have current going through them. So they are potential free, even though they are groups of conductive components. Now, if you're separating these out into potential free and potential and grounded, you could also choose to reset all nets so that everything goes back to being listed underneath potential free. Also, there's an option to import the nets from a spreadsheet if that's how you set it up, but we're not going to cover that in this video. And here we have for net one and net two, we're running this at a voltage of 220 volts. Let's see another option that you have down here is the ability to auto merge distance. In other words, you could specify a distance value. And if the different nets that are found in here are within that merge distance, they'll be put together into the same net together. And so everything looks good in here. Once again, if I go to the analysis tab, everything is grayed out. If I click on apply electric nets, then it takes us to the analysis tab. And so I've covered the metadata and electric nets set up so far, but I do want to go back and show you something back from the metadata for cementing component pairs. And cementing component pairs allows you to take a component and treat them as if they are together as one single component for calculating the creepage between the components. And again, creepage is the shortest path between two conductors along the surface of an insulator. So you can take different components and essentially sort of kind of cement them or merge them together for calculating that creepage distance. Let's click close out of here and I'm going to bring back some of the different components and some features that we have suppressed. So for example, if I go to the housing part, this one was in insert mode. You can either resume those components or if I'm here in the window for that particular component, I can grab the insert here arrow down. And right now we have our features brought back. And so this will help increase the distance for creepage, seeing as now it's a longer path to 
travel along the surface of the insulator. So for example, now that we have this located in here, creepage between this net and this net would now, instead of having to go sort of like on a straight path, has to go along the surfaces of the insulator. Let's go back to the model tree and I am going to resume the component down at the bottom. So here we have another guard component and by putting this component in here, it increases the creepage distance between this net over here and that net over there, except that it can still travel along this particular surface. By cementing the components, it'll have to travel along this surface and then go along this surface and then that small thin surface over here and then this surface. So let's go back to our creepage and clearance analysis. We have all our values in here. Oh wait, looks like the guard doesn't have a value set up. Hey, this is supposed to be an insulator. Let's give it a high value like 300. Let's see if anything is undefined. Nope, we have everything. Now in order to cement those components together, I can click on insert new cementation and then pick this part, hold down the control key and then pick this part over here and then middle mouse button. And so now the housing and the guard are cemented together. So they're acting as a single component in terms of the surfaces acting as an insulator. And once again, we can apply the metadata. We have to remesh. And here we have our potential free nets, our ones with potential with a voltage of 220, and the ones grounded. Let's apply the electric nets. And then in the next video, we will set up the analysis and then run it and then evaluate the results and make improvements in our model. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.